that's where we're going. Come with me to the SOS Children's Village's 30th anniversary in Bucharest. Yay! <laughs> Și pentru o donație, dacă vreți să faceți prin intermediul SMS, puteți trimite textul MAMA la 8864, unde se vor dona automat 4 euro pentru SOS Statele Copiilor. Uh, o să fim cu detalii mai încolo, în curând vor începe băieții cu DJ Ala, așa că distracție plăcută în continuare. Hello, my beautiful crew. Welcome to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi. I'll be your guide for today. Thank you for being here for another Pick a Card Tarot reading in which I will be finding answers to the question, what will happen the next time you two meet? So this is a reading prominently geared at those of you who are in a couple, who have some sort of physical contact with your person and you're able to see them, to meet up with them. But it may also apply to those of you who have a lover from a past life and you're about to meet them you're getting ready you're feeling this kind of intuitive kick that somebody is coming into my life from a romantic point of view i want to figure out what will happen when i meet them in this incarnation so i hope that this makes sense keep in mind i'm reading for a large collective take whatever applies to you and make the message your own you are a powerful creator boo and i'm just here to support you i'm just here to guide the way for you in this wonderful romantic adventure in life so i hope you guys enjoy my halloween decor i put some thought into it i really enjoy this time of the year i know that autumn can be a really depressing time for most people in the world I tend to resonate with that as well, although as a Pisces sun, melancholy is something that I kind of like to ravel in. I'm not afraid of it. It doesn't weigh me down. Um, <laughs> for Pisceans or Neptunian people, depression and kind of melancholy, kind of having this very um, romantic, poetic energy is something that we naturally come equipped with. So... In a way, I want to shed light on the beauty of the season rather than ravel in its nastiness. So I hope that with the strings of readings I will be creating next, I will be able to bring some warmth, some inspiration, and help you manifest positive outcomes in your love life, but even in your life more widely. I have another reading coming up after this one, which will not be focused on romance. It will be mostly for single people, and I will be looking in to loneliness so make sure that you subscribe and tap the bell to receive notifications if you are interested in that particular topic and in general if you enjoy my work i would really appreciate it if you would click the like button and comment down below to drive engagement and help spread these messages to other people that may benefit from them all this being said, I want to introduce to you the options that I have here for you. I thought of giving you some fun couples that have something mad, spooky, or cartoony about them. They are all very sweet. They have such interesting love stories, and they're quite entertaining. So let's begin with group number one. I'm going to move in the camera a little bit closer so you get to see them more clearly. So for group one, here is one of my all-time favorite couples, the Adams family. So we have here Morticia and Gomez Adams for you, group one. I'm playing along with you, so that's my group as well. For group two, we have here Beetlejuice and Lydia. My gosh, the movie with Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder was one of my favorite ones when I was little and then the cartoon on Cartoon Network. Oh, I used to fall asleep watching it. It was not at all creepy to my child's mind. I just loved the visuals. So this is for you, group two. Hey, here we have 
a love story that I think was more recently popularized uh, with the Harlequin movies and also with Birds of Prey and uh, obviously with Batman. So we have here the Joker and Harlequin. So a couple that transcends all boundaries to people that used to be psychotherapist and patient and they ended up becoming criminals. But nonetheless, there is something so appealing about them as a mad couple in love. And then finally, I thought of representing my rainbow crew, my LGBTQ people. I love you guys so much. And even though I'm a heterosexual and there's a lot of heterosexual bias on my channel, I do my best to try to support the community as much as I can as an ally. Thank you for those of you who have commented and have asked me to please expand the range of my readings. I thought of including a really sweet couple. We have here Princess Bubblegum and Marceline the Vampire Queen from Adventure Time. One of the sweetest couples ever. <laughs> yeah, and it only took 10 seasons until we figured out that they are actually a couple. <laughs> Anyway, all this being said, let me move the camera right back up to the wide view. There we go. I hope that now you can take a moment after you saw the details on these images to choose one, the first one that you feel most drawn towards. Please make just one choice because if you make more than one choice, in spite of the fact that I love you hanging out with me for longer, you may confuse yourself and I want to bring you clarity and inspiration. I want to help you believe. I want to help you trust in magic. I don't want you to leave my readings feeling confused or annoyed. And if that happens, oftentimes it's a good moment to begin some shadow work, to begin asking yourself what triggered me? Why was I triggered? What can I do against it? So all this being said, thank you so much for being my patrons. Thank you so much to those of you who are my light or solar crew members. Your membership it supports me so much. I get to buy really awesome resources like astrology books and crystals and tarot and oracle decks and experiment with a lot of things like palmistry, for example, I have it here. You guys supply me with so much love and I love to give back to you. Also, thank you so much to the crew that has been loyally following me on Instagram. I upload pick a card readings almost every day there. I also have a series on the astrological houses on TikTok. So make sure to follow me there as well. And on my website, I've been super prolific in analyzing the birth charts of celebrities. I'm looking at anything in between, you know, people like Vincent van Gogh and and his brother's chart um, to I have an upcoming article about Kim Kardashian. I looked into the chart of Army Hammer, but also into the chart of China Miaville, a British author that I really enjoy. I'm looking very widely. I'm exploring even the case of Doja Cat and the satanic panic, um, which is actually more related to Doja's Saturn return than anything else. So feel free to follow me there on my website. You can also have a look at my e-shop if you want to book a private reading with me i am open for those i would be super happy to help you so thank you guys so much for your love i love creating these readings for you as well for a second i was like what is my work what, am i doing readings yeah i am doing readings <laughs> I've been feeling quite uh, sleepy um, and I've also been recovering from a sore throat in the lead up to this uh, new moon solar eclipse in Libra. It's strongly affecting my ascendant because I have an ascendant in Libra at 25 degrees and this uh, eclipse portal is opening itself right on my well wellspring of opportunities. The ascendant is how we attract opportunities towards us. So all my Libra people, I hope that you guys are taking great care of yourselves. Those of you who have moon in Libra, Venus and Libra, Mars, the North Node, the South Node there, you will be strongly affected by this eclipse. Um, consider subscribing and becoming one of my patrons because I talk extensively about this eclipse as part of my crush tier. You can subscribe for as little as $2 per month. So your support means the world to me. I love creating extra content for you and you can easily access it. All the links for everything I have mentioned are always in the description box underneath any of my videos and in the comment section sometimes. So please take advantage of all these wonderful ways in which you can communicate with me and um, all the work that I feel inspired to put out there for you on the interwebs. Okay, all this being said, let's cut the story short and let's find out what will happen the next time you meet your person. 
Hey group one, welcome to your pick a card reading. This is going to be a reading on the topic of what will happen the next time you two will meet. And this is for those of you who were drawn to the Gomez and Morticia Adams image. So if you're like me, a really big Adams family fan, welcome. I hope that you'll find this reading interesting and entertaining. Have a look at the links in the description box and in the comment section as well while I introduce to you the cards. So the cards you got are the Six of Wands, the Two of Swords reversed, the Ten of Cups, we also have here the priest, Pisces energy. I think in some cases this can also be Taurus. Imagination, conjure dreams and create. The garden. And we also have here Bobinsana, trust. Wow, okay, group one, are you ready for this? It's a very spiritual, healing, emotionally nourishing energy that I'm picking up with your person. The next time you will meet, something will be said that will really open up your heart. I feel like you're going to have a lot of, aww, you know, moments with your person. I feel like they might come clean about something or they will confess to you a secret that they've been holding inside for a very long time. And this secret may very well be that they have feelings for you, that what you have been feeling in this connection, it wasn't just a figment of your imagination. I feel that some of you were driving yourselves crazy trying to understand like, does this person like me? Will they say something? Will they take any actions towards me? And the next time you will meet, you'll have this physical contact which will be quite hot and passionate a little bit lusty as well quite urgent but at the same time i feel that it's going to make your heart grow that's the important part i mean yeah lust you can take it or leave it right but these two combined poof powerful combination yeah so heart and lowens <laughs> and i feel that you will have a very intimate moment in which you will feel that you can both trust each other i feel that there will be a lot of gazing into each other's eyes hand holding um you both have these kind of dreamy expressions like mm. yeah. um i feel like there will be some daydreaming that happens before you guys meet and some daydreaming during the day during the date in some cases this will be a date for some of you um maybe your person is going to send you a poem or a quote from a book author that you really like, um, a trilogy I'm hearing in some cases. Mm -hmm. Some of you like Lords of the Rings. Uh, this person could craft a message to make it sound like it's an elf language or something of that nature. And it's really going to touch your heartstrings. I feel like this person has been having feelings for you for such a long time. In some cases, this could be a coworker or a friend of a friend, a friend of a sibling, somebody that you know for a very long time and this person is going to finally tell you what they feel for you. So this is what's going to happen the next time you'll meet. This is the core um, energy that I'm picking up on. This person will confess their feelings to you and it will be something that will make you happy. Yeah. And you'll feel like it's a minor victory. I feel like you will know that hang on a minute, we still have a lot of limits to overcome. But at the same time, it's like, this is enough to keep me going for the time being. You know, I know that we are finally a unit, at least that we are together in this common goal. So I feel like you could also plan to go on a trip with the Six of Wands here. There is the possibility of a holiday get together, a weekend away, a city break. It may not be something over large distances but it could be something that you both can do on the spur of the moment as you feel guided by impulse you may feel quite romantically inclined to elope <laughs> someplace uh, or just to go on a trip 
a garden could be significant, a botanic garden, um, somebody's like vegetable herb garden, maybe visiting a grandmother or a grandfather and uh, helping them in the garden. A weekend getaway to spend some time in the countryside or near a farm, uh, visiting a village or taking a quest somewhere in the woods. Um, oh God, the word escapes me right now. It's coming to me in Romanian. Um, in a cave, yeah. I thought the word Peshtera kept coming up to my mind. That's how we say cave in Romanian. So yeah, you may explore some caves. Um, you may look for minerals. You may have fun with crystals. You may go to, no, not really a museum, but like an open air museum, like a, a village museum. That's what I'm picking up on. Um, I feel like um, right now in the world there is autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere and you're going to take part in this gorgeous play of light that the sun is creating at the moment as the world is twisting on its axis towards it. So I feel like you're going to really... I see a lot of light, you know, like sunrise um, or sunset there's a lot of light beams that are filtering through and you're just going to find it irresistible how the light beams are going to touch your person's face. And I feel like it's going to feel really romantic, you know, like those beautiful autumnal or springtime colors are just going to emphasize the moment and make it even more romantic, like literally etching it into the memory of both of you. I also see that with Bobinsana Trust, we have here the astrological energy of Moon in the sign of Neptune or Moon conjunct Neptune. Um, this is also Moon in Pisces. So at the moment, we are under an astrological sky at the moment at which I'm filming this reading, which has Saturn loosely conjunct Neptune in the sign of Pisces. So those of you who have a moon in Pisces are quite challenged by emotional frost, heaviness, limitations. You could be feeling quite challenged emotionally by those of you in your family, your nearest and dearest, or you could just be feeling a little bit low. But the moon conjunct Saturn energy can also bring you some sort of karmic emotional reward for all the stoicism and limitations and kind of sentimental deprivations that you had to endure throughout your life. So either you or your person are under this energy, you either have a moon in Pisces natally um, or a moon conjunct Neptune, which acts a little bit like a moon in Pisces. And I feel like it's strongly going to be emphasized. You may meet on a day in which the moon will be in the sign of Pisces as well. So check in the lunar calendar the next time when the moon is in Pisces, there's a very good likelihood that you will meet this person around that day. And you guys know that there is a span of two and a half days up until the moon switches signs. So it could happen anytime around those dates. I feel like I'm getting some blocks, some limitations, because I feel like my voice doesn't carry through when I'm talking about timing. Um, it could be that you may be blocked by um, a certain distance at the moment. I'm hearing emotional frost, I'm hearing separation. Some of you who may be in separation from a person could have clicked on this option and I have the feeling that you're in the wrong place. You need to go back and click again, choose another pile because I have the feeling that this is going to be mostly for people who haven't separated from their partner. This is, I'm getting the energy of crushing on somebody and taking it to the next level or meeting somebody that is like poof you have a feeling this person is familiar uh, they may be a soulmate from a past lifetime so this is a connection that is going to grow very quickly um i see it here with the garden i see it here with the six of wands i feel that there won't be so many tests of trust between the two of you but there could be a little issue here with communication, with putting into words your likes and dislikes and really standing by them. You will have the feeling that you need to merge with what your partner likes. And I will strongly recommend that you guard yourself against doing that. If you like something that your partner doesn't like, stick with it. You don't have to like everything that your partner likes. You don't have to become them in order to show that you love them or that you are worthy of love. That's a mistake a lot of people make. And once they separate from their partner, 
they end up not knowing who they really are because they compromise their identity to be with a specific person, which may have also led to the separation. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Stand true to who you are. That's what your person will love about you. And I feel like this person will have this very strong spiritual attachment to you. So this definitely goes beyond physicality. It goes beyond lust. It goes beyond, oof, I have this fire in my belly for you. This is more about, you make my heart sing, you know, it's like, I feel you here in my chest, you know, and it's definitely giving you those deeply warm and affectionate moments where you just want to hug them, and protect them and like make sure that they're okay, right? So I feel that you're going to be made very happy by your next meeting with your person. And much like the passionate attraction that Gomez has towards Morticia and the kind of steadiness that Morticia brings in the relationship to Gomez, there's this gorgeous attraction and yet stability that is created between you and your person the next time when you will meet. I feel that you would do well if you have enjoyed this reading because I feel like we're nearing the end of it to envision it, you know, create a mood board, use this reading as a point of inspiration and start journaling, start creating a story, visualize your next encounter. Now that you know the energetic and emotional spiritual blueprint, you can think about the material details like where are we going to meet and what time of the day will it be? As I said, I'm picking up on a time of the day when the sun is going to be very active, either at sunrise or at sunset. Um, I feel like you guys may meet in a garden or may meet to travel to a garden, some sort of village-like place. And it may happen when the moon is next in the sign of Pisces on that day or the day before or after. Um, I do think that religion has a part to play with this. It could be on a religious ground or near a religious ground. You guys could meet to visit the monastery and the lush gardens or vineyards or vegetable and herb allotments next to it. I think you're going to make a beautiful day trip of it. And I think that you both are going to be left feeling super romantically attached after this meeting. And also, this is an encounter that will definitely feed your imagination for months to come after. This is the reading that I had for you, group one. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. These are the messages that I wanted to come through. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe and comment down below. Until next time, take care of your heart. Hey, group two, welcome to a pick a card reading on the topic of what will happen between the two of you the next time you will meet. So this is a reading for those that were drawn to Beetlejuice and Lydia as a couple. Yeah, so let's see the cards that you got. Make sure to check the links in the description box and in the comment section as I'm showing you the cards as well. Oh, <laughs> we start off with um, quite a large trio of blocked cards. So we have the Five of Pentacles blocked, the Ace of Pentacles blocked, Ace of Swords blocked. Oof. Ah, we have the giver. Okay, this is good. Let's see. Look ahead. The keywords are visionary, planning, and preparation. We also have here the Rainbow Reviver. Oh, okay, good. And the final card, we have Tobacco Offering. Okay. I feel that the next time you are going to meet this person, there is going to be an air of melancholy. Um, there will be a lot of doubts in your mind regarding, am I worthy? Am I the person this person should be choosing? You could be involved in a three-party situation. You could be part of a trio of friends and you don't know which one to go for. There may be a choice that is needed. You have the energy here of a bold new beginning, both in the way in which you speak and communicate your needs in a personal relationship, and also in terms of kind of the material foundation you can create with your person. But it's not forthcoming. It's like somebody saying, no, this is too good to be true. No, this is not for me. No, I don't think I can do it. I don't have the energy for it. Who do I think I am? <laughs> There's a whiff of self-sabotage, I'm not going to lie. 
you guys know that I read the cards as I see them, not as I would like them to be. That would be perfect readings constantly, right? But I want you to be aware of the fact that there will be a desire to overcome feelings of low self-worth and low self-esteem. It could be that you guys have history. Um, I feel that definitely this is a pile for those of you that were in separation. Maybe you came here from group one because I noticed that somebody in group one chose incorrectly and I sent them to one of the other piles. So if you're here from group one, hey, this is your reading. Stay here. <laughs> um, I feel that one of you definitely has some problems, some issues related to feeling good enough, feeling worthy, feeling valuable. Like they have to do a lot of inner work to provide themselves with this energy. While the other one is trying to offer as much as they can, I think that, you know, the other one is coming with a lot of communication, a gift, you know, an offer to go out and eat something fun and pragmatic that they could do together the other one is like mm, I'd rather sit indoors I'd rather think about this rather than take any action because thinking is safer than acting so what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you a second chance because I hate to see these energies upside down this is too good to be missed out on <laughs> it's an opportunity that shouldn't be relinquished but I'm going to keep the Five of Pentacles as it is. Let's work some magic, okay? I feel like you guys need a helping hand. And the moment when I said helping, it's like my tongue twisted in my mouth. Wow, some of you really can't accept help. I feel like you're going to want to help your person and they may say no. Or your person may want to help you and you could be like, ooh, no. Because it would be awful to open up and be vulnerable to show the other person that... I need help. But guess what, my love? It's actually the glue that will keep your connection together to show a little bit of vulnerability. I'm not saying right now that you should squander at this person's feet and kiss their toes. Don't do whatever you don't feel is aligned with your sense of pride. But at the same time, accept help if you need it. Allow this person to feel helpful, to feel needed by you. That could be the crux of this problem, of the situation. It's a kind of like, one of you is indifferent. Yeah, the Ace of Swords blocked. It's kind of like, I don't care. I'd rather not think about it. I can't be bothered. And the other one is impractical. The Ace of Coins blocked. It's like, I don't need anything. I've got everything I want. I make my own money. I buy my own things. I get my own gifts. I don't, I don't need extra. But I feel that this is a misunderstood gift because it comes with also happiness. It doesn't only come with the opportunity to be physically close to somebody. There are no cups here. I'm looking at these cards and I see no cups, no emotions. Um, there's also a lack of passion, a lack of action, no wands. We have coins and swords. Very logical, very rational energy. If I make a move now, Will this person make a move? Strategy. It's like a game of cat and mouse between the two of you. It's a chess move. And that's what's blocking love from growing. The rulership of reason. It's kind of choking the possibility of this connection to blossom into something more. So something has got to give. Let's see what has to give. Well, first of all, <laughs> one of you is going to step into the role of a giver. I feel like there may be like a weird awkward exchange between the two of you when you see one another one of you may want to give a gift to the other person the other person may reject it they could try to explain or reason why they may reject it and the other person is going to perceive that as a slight because there are some communications some pragmatically related issues that will take place the next time you meet this person but then i feel like one of you is going to bite their lower lip, put effort into this and say, okay, I want to give to you, you know, please accept what I want to give to you. It's maybe not much. It may be not what you want to receive at the moment, but please just accept something. <laughs> I feel like um, one of you is going to try to tear down the very heavy defenses that the other one has built. Because I feel like at least one of you 
has some ascendant in cancer or energy in cancer and they would rather stay safe than be loved but i think you want to be loved because that's why you're here right clicking on pick a card readings <laughs> i see a group too the rainbow reviver talks about the fact that your connection is going to steadily grow into something more colorful more animated i feel like at the moment there may be fear fear that is leading you or your person to make these decisions that are impulsive and protective there is this defensiveness it's like how can i pierce through that wall how can i reach you you know what can i say and what can i give you in order to reach you there may be an age difference between the two of you because i'm just noticing that you are drawn to a couple that has a considerable age difference yeah there may be an ethnical difference between the two of you you guys could come from different races different ethnicities different cultural backgrounds or religions so you could struggle a little bit to rationally think through how this connection may work but you're still attracted to this individual i feel that if you plan ahead if you prepare if you do some inner work before you meet this person the chances of having a more successful meeting are going to grow and successful may mean in the situation just being able to feel safe in this person's presence rationally you may say to yourself i have no reason to not feel safe nobody scares me i don't really care what other people think i feel what i feel i think what i think but then when you're face to face with this person there could be this random energy overtaking you and it's like ooh, i just want to go and hide even if good things are happening you know even if this person may lean in and try to kiss you or try to give you a compliment you could freak out and push it back you know like a ping pong game um you're serving your person i feel that this person reminds you on a deep level of a very protective fatherly presence they could work in a profession that is quite traditional quite powerful and on some level you feel guided towards this person because they may give you the promise of future protection it's kind of like i feel like you guys need protection on some level i see that there will be a really intense heated conversation between you and your person because we have the birds and they're sitting on these antlers antlers usually represent a sign of something that has calcified something that is quite harsh that is hard to break down a stubbornness so one of you may convince the other one of why it's important for you both to be in this connection but i think that that is necessary for the connection to move forward you may meet this person on the 20th and one of you could be 29 years old yeah in which case if this is true um your one of you is going through your saturn return and that's why it's very difficult it's kind of like a dark night of the soul to get a person to actually fulfill their saturn karma but it's not impossible even if it's difficult it can still be achieved and if you're going through your saturn return at the moment when you're watching this reading i am at the moment under a sky with saturn in pisces so you could be having saturn in pisces which is basically the effort that you need to put into to become more compassionate more intuitive more in touch with your feelings because people born with saturn in pisces are usually blocked off emotionally they struggle to believe in god they struggle to feel their feelings and they struggle with control because they can't allow themselves to be overwhelmed even if sometimes going with the flow of this overwhelm is going to lead you it's going to lead you huh? lead them exactly where they need to be so yeah definitely i feel like some of you are going through your saturn return around the time when you'll meet this person with tobacco i have here the energy of giving an offering to an ancestor what you are experiencing in your love life and what this person is triggering inside of you is a pattern that your ancestors also tended to fall into so for example there is a pattern down your female line in the family and i'm saying female because i see here an older woman 
that, for example, women tended to fall in love mostly with younger men, or women were always cheated upon, or um, women fell in love with men who would have this bad boy reputation and always end up in jail. So there is something here that the universe is trying to get you to pay attention to because you have the awareness, the intelligence and sensitivity to break through this pattern. And what you need to do is just be observant, to pay close attention to what happens, to be as much in the present, to take deep breaths, to take pauses, not be impulsive and jump ahead to conclusions and then completely block or discredit the situation. Because I think this can teach you so much. So giving an offering to an ancestor that can help you break a pattern will be significant. But also, you may, you may smoke with this person the next time you see them. It could alleviate some of the anxiety. Um, it may not be tobacco necessarily. It could just be weed or other herbal smokes. I feel like you guys are going to have this tense exchange of words that will lead to a moment of deep awareness that will help one of you step into the giver role and it will happen on the background of some smoke. It may also be the smoke of something that is burning behind you or in front of you like a campfire smoke, a sort of like burning man kind of uh, ritual or it may just happen around Halloween um, if you are taking part in some sort of local gathering where there is a bonfire. So I see here the need to try to put yourself in a relaxed mindset and not jump ahead to conclusions as quickly as you hear your person say something. I feel it's going to be important to pay attention not only to what this person will be saying to you, but also what they will be doing. Because actually at core, you both really like each other very strongly. You actually see this person as a as a good potential spouse for you. Um, but there are some chimeras, some illusions here that are blocking your capacity to be together, mostly because I feel wounds are coming up. And both of you like to hide behind the wound rather than deal with it head on because it may be too painful and it may be too embarrassing to suddenly start crying and telling your heart's story in front of a person you're trying to figure out if they will be a good counterpart, you're trying to romantically impress and woo. So definitely ask for the advice of an ancestor, give them an offering, light a candle next to an image of themselves and pray to them to activate their energy. But with the Rainbow Reviver, and that's why I laughed at the beginning when I pulled this card, I can see here that definitely your connection is moving into something more colorful, more vital, more animated, more energized. Because I feel that some of you are quite soulfully tired from having undergone some pretty important and difficult emotional lessons in your life, especially if you have Saturn and Pisces. That's basically your lifetime's karma, feelings, yeah, dealing with them. Oof. I feel like this was a mini therapy session. I'm going to end the reading here. I hope this was helpful. Please take whatever you heard in this reading and make it your own. Manifest it if you feel like it. I definitely feel you're moving away from a lack mindset and into something more abundant, more coupled up and loving. Make sure to like this video if you have enjoyed it. Comment down below and share with me your stories and subscribe. Include yourself in my family. Now make sure to come at you next time with another interesting pick a card reading. Thank you so much for listening. Take care of your heart. Ciao. Hey group three, welcome to a pick a card reading on the topic of what will happen between you and your person the next time you see them. So I have a reading here for you for those who are drawn to this mad love couple. We have the Harlequin and the Joker. Um, I'm hearing that some of you may want to dress up like them for Halloween or have already done so, in which case, please send me the pictures. I would love to see you guys <laughs> doing this cosplay. I think it will be amazing. You can do so on Instagram. You can DM me. I'd be happy to like your pictures. So all this being said, also don't send me anything if you don't feel like it, okay? You do you, boo. Let me show you the cards that I have here for you. I also needed to shift my position. I feel like something will be shifting in your 
connection with your person. It could be that you are exchanging photos with them. There was this message about sending photos in cosplay. So let's see. We have here the Eight of Wands. We also have the Five of Cups blocked. We have the Four of Coins. The Father. Acknowledgement. So this is about knowing, acceptance, and seeing. One of you could have eyesight issues. We have serendipity. And the final card, motherwort, strength. And this is the energy of Venus. Leo. Venus and Leo could have been really important. We had Venus in the sign of Leo for most of the summer in 2023. That could have been a significant transit for you. Um, I'm seeing here a connection in which things are going to move very fast to something physical. So the next time when you see your person, I feel like you guys could um, do something a little bit risque. Um, you may decide to go dancing. You may touch your bodies. Um, if you haven't done so in the past, this is going to be quite a thrilling moment, I feel. Um, this person may actually take you on a fast ride car or they may have a motorcycle and you could go for a motorcycle ride with them. Uh, you may go and um, I feel like you could do some sort of water sports or bungee jumping, something connected to climbing or running over things or participating in an activity that, uh, yeah, some of you will go boxing or watching a boxing match. There is something here about adrenaline, yeah? The Eight of Wands is the card of adrenaline. It's that pump, that spike that you get when uh, you're up against something risky and dangerous, but you still want to go ahead and challenge yourself to go for it. So it could be that being with this person is a risk, but nonetheless, you are choosing to throw caution to the wind and be with this person. I mean, you were drawn to this couple for a very specific reason. It could be that maybe... You may be slightly bored with how things were in your love life and you're trying out something different. Um, it may also feel like a sense of urgency because you haven't seen your person in a very long time and you just want to hold them and touch them and kiss them and make love to them. There is this feeling of, oh, I just can't wait to put my hands on you. I also feel that there is a very difficult period in which both of you have struggled emotionally this period is at an end and you're overcoming that. One of you may have lost a parent or a relative, a pet. They could have lost some money. They could have lost their job. It's something that really put them in the dumps. Something that really took away their light and capacity to feel energetic and optimistic. But the other one is providing the person that has lost something that is a little bit more sad, is providing this kind of stable, sturdy ground. One of you is a pillar of strength for the other person. It may be that I'm looking here at a connection between a Scorpio and a Leo, and the Scorpio could get occasionally quite depressed, overwhelmed by everything that they have imbibed from the darker side of society while the Leo remains steadfast and convinced that everything is going to be okay, they are the best, they are going to figure out a solution. I see here somebody that's quite possessive, quite jealous, so there may be some sort of, <laughs> um, you know, your person could come at you hot and fast and be like, are you cheating on me? What's happening? Um, and it could be that this is why they feel so sad because they have these obsessive doubts. Uh, maybe somebody said something to them or they looked at some of your messages or things you have posted on social media and it's kind of like your actions don't match your words. What are you doing here? You're driving me crazy. So this person could come hot and fast and try to challenge you for this very open and honest conversation regarding, well, basically how you belong to each other and whether you belong to each other. This may be a connection in which you both are still trying out other options and now the next time you meet them, it's going to become official that you guys are a couple, you are exclusive. You're not dating anyone else, you're not looking elsewhere. It's going to be a firm commitment with the four of coins here. So I see here a moment that will require your capacity to truly hold fast to what you believe in 
to what you want and to not be swayed by what your person is saying or doing. If your person is challenging you on a matter, rather than just being like shy and cowering and being like, no, well, I actually, yeah, if you say I am like this, then I am like this. No, you have to be very proud and very accomplished and just say, no, of course not. I'm not this kind of a person. Who do you think I am? Hair flip, you know? <laughs> That's very much Leo energy, like very strong, very potent, very um, unafraid to take on challenges. If somebody's coming at you with aggression, argue back, you know? <laughs> and I think that on some level, maybe your person wants that. Maybe the connection between the two of you was a bit too stale, a bit too boring. It's like they want a little bit of a, of a fight, of an argument. And it's not necessarily toxic. People argue in relationships because it's kind of like they need to make the energy renew itself sometimes. There may be some problems here with a mother. There could have been some fertility issues that have blocked this connection from moving forward. Maybe you wanna have a child and you can't with your person or your person wants to have a child but they can't with you. There is something here that is related to fertility and even though you feel like you found the right person, maybe there are some blocks there. One of you is infertile and the other one really wants a baby and it's causing some heartache. It's like, how can I fulfill my dream with you when you are the person I want to be with, but I also cannot get a child from you. We will never be able to be parents. So I feel that there's a conversation here regarding fertility. I feel that this may also be about preventing a pregnancy from happening. So maybe having an open conversation about the use of condoms or other means of protection. Um, I feel like one of you is a little bit upset as to a boundary that was crossed. So I feel that your next encounter is going to take place completely spontaneously. It will be a surprise. It will sweep you off your feet a little bit. It may involve a boat. Um, it could be flying over a body of water very quickly, very spontaneously. Um, I'm picking up on Canada. Maybe your person comes from Canada or you're going to fly to Canada to see them. Yeah, I mean, with these two cards, with Serendipity and the Eight of Wands, things will move very fast, very quickly. Um, <laughs> there may be an issue here with make sure that you go to your date or to the meeting with some sort of fertility protection, um, just in case, you know, if things progress too quickly to the main event, if you know what I mean. I have to be suggestive about the sensual time. But I think that there will be a true recognition of who this person is to you. And what you mean in this person's life. You could meet that nighttime. Owls may be involved. You could hear the hooting of an owl in the background. You could be someplace that is quite relaxed, secluded, close to a forest. Or there may just be an abundance of owls in that specific time of the year in the region where you will meet your person. For a moment, I kind of felt like Twin Peaks is significant and Twin Peaks in the series was this kind of weird, strange town that was at the border between America and Canada, I think around Niagara Falls, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I, I may be wrong about that, but there was something there about border. So it could be that you need to cross a border to be with your person. Your person sees you as somebody very wise that they can turn to for advice. The number 26 is important, either your age or the day in which you will meet them. And I see here 13 as well as significant. 26 and 13, these stand out. We do have here the father. And the father in this deck represents Capricorn energy. So you or your person could be Capricorn or have a Capricorn ascendant, Sun conjunct Saturn. You're definitely challenged by life and challenged in your capacity to have confidence and to boldly claim your person. Some of you could be doing it too harshly and it comes across as domineering. Others of you could not be doing it at all and it comes across as lethargic. So striking the right balance, but there is long-term potential here with your person. With this deep red, this talks about commitment. Deep red always makes me think of that crystal, carnelian, 
and I feel that that is a stone that is usually associated with the sign of Capricorn in the month of January and it is the stone of ripe mature love deep long-term commitment so committing to yourself first of all and saying I choose to be happy I choose to be with my person but also kind of enticing your person to step out of this role of the father and to become more like your lover because I think there are some parental projections that happen you know one of you could choose to be the child in this connection while the other one is stepping into the role of the father or the mother and they tend to kind of lay down the law and set certain rules or boundaries while the other one just goes along it would be good if you both could find a compromise between these roles so that one doesn't feel like the parent and the other one always is infantilized by the parent I feel like this connection could bring up some father healing in your life. I have a pick a card reading on that topic if you want to check it out on my main channel's page in my pick a card reading section. That may help you in some way. This person could bring up a certain thing that your father used to do with you. Like if your father ignored you, this person could be doing it unconsciously. Or if your father was too strict with you, this person could be in a similar way, kind of bringing up that dissatisfaction inside of you. So I feel that some of you could have been in that in two minds about this. It's like, are we going to fit well together? Well, I think that the next time when you meet them, you're going to have this flash of sudden awareness that, yeah, this is my person. What was I thinking to, to doubt them? What was I thinking to kind of want to want to kind of want to <laughs> Wow, what happened there? wanting to run away from that yeah wanna wanna there's there's desire here there's desire that hasn't been acted upon so i don't even know if you guys kissed or hugged or actually been physically close with each other maybe you just had an online interaction but there will be a true acknowledgement on the day when you guys will meet the next time you meet from the moment when you watch this reading it's like like this beautiful clear calm water on this day in which the clouds are parting and the sun is coming out you will feel a sense of peace. It's like, mm, finally, what I've been feeling is confirmed. This is my person. This is where I want to build my love tent with you here, the two of us together. And definitely work through certain father-mother issues. I also feel that you both could become parents in spite of the fertility problems that I see here. It may be that you may need to think more broadly about your chances of becoming parents parents like if you can't do it biologically think about a gestational carrier maybe or if that is not part of your budget think about adopting a child i mean there are a variety of ways of becoming parents nowadays i wouldn't let that get in the way of you being happy with your person let me know down in the comments what do you think share your story with me i'd love to read it make sure to like this video as well subscribe to be part of my growing family Thank you so much for listening and I cannot wait to see you next time. Until then, take care of your beautiful heart. Ciao. Hey group four, uh, we have a surprise guest here. This is my pet cat, Sol, who was napping and she decided to come pay us a visit. She has a bit of a sore throat and when she is purring, she makes this funny like sound. It's like she's pushing through her nose with air. Yeah, do you want to go? So even before I started showing you the cards and even the option that you selected, so this is for those of you who are drawn to Princess Bubblegum and Marceline, the Vampire Queen, even before that, I can already tell that your next meeting with your person may involve a pet, either walking the pet, taking the pet to the vet, something may happen with the pet of your partner and you're going to both need to focus on that animal and you're going to have to give it care. I feel like it will be a moment of deep bonding between the two of you. Maybe one of you is a dog lover, the other one is a cat lover, or you have a specific type of animal, insect, reptilian that you are attracted to. And I have a feeling that it will be a moment of breakthrough where the other person is going to start to understand why you form such a special bond with that specific creature and i feel like sometimes you know we manage to speak through our pets and we say some 
harsh truths or uncomfortable things. Like I do it most of the time with my parents. My parents do it with me. We speak through our cats. So I feel like something of that nature may transpire between you and your person. But let me show you the cards. <laughs> We're getting there as well, slowly and steadily. I also need to say that there will be a feeling of hunger because I had to stop in between filming for group three and your group and I actually um, ate some beets. You see my fingers are red because of that. So maybe somebody's fingers will be stained with paint or maybe because they've been working in the ground, they may have some soil in their fingertips. Um, or it could just be that they have henna or tattoos that could also be involved okay just so a variety of messages for you group four i keep getting them from all sorts of mediums aside from the cards but let's see what the cards have to say some of you are actually afraid of tarot you clicked on this reading just out of curiosity but you may be like "Ooh, tarot is kind of scary group four what's happening here i just got a notification as soon as i went to show you the cards i got a notification that my camera was shut down in three two one you know it was very abrupt and um, i also realized i had some food stuff in my teeth so I had to go and kind of cleanse my teeth and reapply my lip balm all sorts of things are going haywire in your reading expect for a lot of surprising things to happen the day you will meet your person yeah so there may be a situation where you need to think on your feet it could be pet related maybe a pet is going to suffer from something and you guys are going to have to quickly react or it may just be that there there will be all these micro adjustments that you will need to do like reapply lip balm or if you guys go out and eat you're gonna be self-conscious about do i have something in my teeth is this person not wanting to kiss me because i have something in my teeth um there may be some sort of environmental weather changes that could block your chances of going out to explore you may decide to go outdoors and do something fun but in the end you'll spend time indoors adjust adapt uh, get ready mentally prepare for that now finally my camera is plugged in i feel like i'm on <laughs> i'm on top i'm in control of the situation mm, one of you is gonna want to be on top <laughs> but nonetheless i feel like whatever happens to you during the time when you are there with your person it's going to be fun i mean initially you may feel a little bit irritated or alarmed that things are not going as planned but by the end i feel like you guys are going to laugh and you're going to make a really fun memory out of it like you will have a story to tell your cards <laughs> okay so we have here the ten of coins blocked we have uh, the knight of wands blocked aries leo sagittarius energy in a low vibration we have the two of coins we have Pau Darko, that's your herb, and the keyword is metamorphosis. We also have here manifestation, the storyteller, one of my favorite cards in this deck, and we also have uh, observations. Yeah, so we have here patience, attention, pause, stay watchful. We have the black bunny. A lot of you are really struggling to manifest this meeting with this person. Some of you may have not even had a physical encounter with them yet. It is something you're trying to do with all your heart. You're doing a lot of um, spiritual cleansing, chakra alignment. You're trying to stand in your power. You're doing some inner work. You may be flowing with yoga moves. I feel like you may be focused on prana work, deep breathing. To a large extent, focusing on breathing is the core feature of spirituality. Uh, because I think I said it before in another clip, the word spiritus in Latin means breath. So you can imagine spirituality is basically the act of breathing. And um, I feel that, yeah, bad luck, bad, bad luck related to a pet. But don't get alarmed because I feel like eventually this will lead towards this heavenly situation as i said things are going to go haywire i feel like i concentrated the reading in the first part very quickly maybe because you're rushing and you need me to give you messages quickly <laughs> some of you as i said are kind of afraid of oracle cards or tarot cards so you want me to give you messages without the images but how can you deny the beauty of these images you see there's nothing threatening about them i feel like um 
you're going to manifest this person back into your life for some cases for the first time when you will go through a very strong glow up i feel like in spite of the fact that there may be this uh, chip on your shoulder regarding something that has happened in your life you may be quite careful quite watchful um, maybe you before you this person you will try to go on a date with another person that will leave kind of like a bad taste like a sour feeling you know like maybe you will go on like a pretty nasty date and then you'll be like oh should i continue should i keep hoping should i still try at love should i continue dating and the answer is yes yes 100 percent. because the next person you're dating is this person that is a soulmate of yours so i feel that this reading applies more to those of you who haven't yet materialized this person you haven't yet met them you're waiting to meet again with this soulmate that you know from a past life and it's incarnated here so the next time you meet them for most of you this is going to be the first time i hope it makes sense and i haven't confused you you're going to have to navigate some rough waters until you find this person especially if it's a same-sex relationship i feel it's going to be quite difficult because you know the pool of dating tends to be a little bit more restrained um, in the case of the lgbtq community they have to be more careful due to the heteronormative restrictions in society you know people's prejudices and violence so i feel that you'll be quite cautious quite guarded on the day of the meeting um for some of you, I really feel the need to say this, you could be on your period, yeah, so there could be this energy of um, needing a tampon or two, um, you may feel a little bit grouchy, I feel like you will begin the day with all the best intentions in mind and by the end of it, it's like, I knew it, I knew something bad is going to take place, but you will see that all bad turns into good, that it was necessary for you guys to go through something difficult in order to have this emotional outburst in order to be vulnerable in front of each other to get to know one another my nose is itching so much which is usually an indication that spirit is here so i feel that messages that are coming through in your reading in spite of the fact that they tend to be all over the place they are exactly what you need to hear right now i see that there will be some juggling that may need to happen uh, one of you could have just finished work or they may still be on the phone with somebody from work uh, a relative or even the veterinarian in case you are actually fitting in with the scenario of a pet needing your help so there's going to be this pocket of time in which you guys will be together on that day and then other moments when you're going to have to talk to other people or take a trip or interact with things that are not very romantic or you two related there may be an ex that keeps bothering you. Um, I feel here this is a person that has no, no serious intentions with you, no commitment. This is just an individual that wants to get the physical side of things with you, if you know what I mean. And there may be a loss of money. So <laughs> it's a bit of a conflicting energy because I, I do feel like it's that kind of a day that you will begin it with maybe some physical symptoms due to your menstruation and uh, some problems with money an ex that could be pestering you needing to juggle two things at the same time and then on top of it all you were looking forward to your date with your person and a pet is going through something that may require your immediate attention or the pet of your person nonetheless i feel like by the end of this date you guys are going to work together like a team and just the fact that you were pushed into that situation is going to put your connection a leap forward like you would have needed three or four or five dates to actually get to know each other at the level at which you will know each other just on that date let's let me put it into perspective so it's going to be like a fast progress in your connection due to the sudden spontaneous accident serendipity emergency that may happen on the day so all good turns towards or bad turns towards good that's the motto that you need to have for the specific event i'm going to open up this energy for you because i really don't like to see these two cards blocked so i feel that you will regain your sum of money that may have been lost or your finances will unblock by the end of the day and i feel that there will be a really passionate moment between you and your person that has to do with 
a spiritual attraction, not only the physical side of things, you know. They are connected, of course. The spiritual oftentimes contains the sensual and vice versa. But I see very clearly here that this person had only one thing in mind. And by the end of the day, it could just be that you guys have worked through an issue and it's like you have that more intimate emotional bond that supersedes the physical. I feel like the main attraction that you had towards this person came from the fact that this person has the gift of gab. They are very good conversationalists. They're very eloquent. They could have some sort of communicative platform on social media. And that's what attracted you towards them. But I also feel that... Oh, I kind of need to censor this card. Um, I also feel that this person will help you transform. And this is why the connection could feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if you think about the relationship that you were drawn towards, right? Princess Bubblegum and Marceline, initially when they first appear in Adventure Time, they look almost as if they don't like each other, right? And it's kind of like it was speculated by the fans of the show that Nah, I don't think there's something between them. And it took so long, right? Ten seasons before it was finally clarified. It was such a slow, beautiful build-up. Uh, but people started to get the hint that they really liked each other from earlier on. So it may be something that has a build-up, you know? And it begins with this rather spontaneous event that happens to you guys on the day you will have your first meeting or your first date, Um and that's going to help bind you guys very quickly, right? It will take you from uh, just uh, some strangers that are casually getting to know one another to, oh, wow, okay, I really have formed a deep bond with you because we've been through something quite intense together. Um, yeah, it reminds me of a show that I've seen with a man that falls in love with a woman uh, during um, a hostage situation in a bank. Like, that's the first time that they meet. They are both part of a hostage situation in a bank. I think it was a French-Canadian love story that I really enjoyed. I watched it on my trip from the UK to Canada. <laughs> it was really, really good. And they formed this deep bond. It's like really instantly. I mean, you go together through trauma and you survive it. And then you realize that you have this intense energy. And it's not like trauma bonding in the sense that you both come from traumatized childhoods or traumatized past relationships. It's kind of like you go together through some social or environmental event that pushes you closer together because, you know, you're stronger together than apart. You can overcome and thrive more successfully together. Kind of like the last of us, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm coming at you with a lot of cultural references. So it could be also judging by how cozy they look here, having their hot chocolate or tea and watching. Uh, I think they're watching magic performed, being performed, but um, I feel like you guys could go and watch a movie at the end of the day. So after everything was said and done, you guys could either decide to go at each other's places. You may pick a place and decide to make some hot cocoa and sit and watch something together, Netflix and chill. Or you may go to the cinema and decide to make a date out of it in the end and just do something low-key in terms of energy and more relaxing. Uh, some of you are going to cry. I feel like it will be a really important moment in which you kind of just um, unburden yourself from the energetic and emotional load of the day. But I feel like this person will find that act very endearing. I don't think they will shame you in any way for showing human emotion. I think on the contrary, you are really going to stand out during that day. It's going to be mostly about you and how radiant you look in this person's eyes. So if anything, your next date with this person, in spite of all the interruptions and electricity and kind of like uh, weird bouts where you think like, what is happening to me? I'm having like the worst day ever. How can this be? You are actually going to be um, standing like uh, the leading lady, the leading actress. And I'm saying she because it's a woman here, but take it as it applies. And you're going to be quite um, like the superstar, you know, all eyes will be on you and especially your person's eyes. <laughs> so I think you're going to turn a situation that could have been just uh, a casual hookup, a one night stand into a person that is uh, intimately connected with you in a way that they never thought was possible just from one meeting. And it could be because of this uh, string of bad luck that is actually a blessing in disguise. It's all meant to get you guys to 
connect with each other very quickly. And you will successfully overcome it, you know. I feel like you're going to become more observant, more aware, more conscious of the fact that there's something really special with this person. So these are the characteristics that I see will define your next meeting. Wow, what a reading. <laughs> I didn't expect that as well. Uh, comment down below and let me know what do you think. Share your story with me. I'll be more than happy to read your comments. Also, make sure to like this video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe. Include yourself in my growing family. We love to have you here. And until next time, take care of your beautiful heart. Ciao.